Hello and welcome to the Small Business University. My name is Kelly Leonard and I'm your host for this event. Each month we bring the business community together as a way to network, collaborate, and share best practices in an effort to stimulate local economic development. Joining me here in the studio today are some phenomenal small business owners and entrepreneurs and we're here to just learn some dynamic information from a gentleman whom I have a tremendous amount of respect for. But before I turn the floor over to Glenn, I want to give credit to our, our tremendous title sponsor, Mid-Atlantic Federal Credit Union. It, without them, these events would not be possible, and certainly I want to thank our friends at Montgomery Community Media as well. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Glenn Garns. He's the founder of the Village Connector Community, and I am confident that you are going to learn some tremendous information that's designed to really help you to maximize or supercharge your connections and your networking efforts. So without further ado, Mr. Glenn Garns. Thank you very much, Kelly. You always do a fantastic job of that. Well, greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here today. And I must say that it's nice to see some familiar faces in the room. But I want to caution you to be on your best behavior because the fact that you know me previously doesn't allow you to heckle any more than anyone else. So, um, This is always a special uh, opportunity for me to address a group of professionals. And the mere fact that on a Thursday morning you're up so early, and I say this with sincerity, I'm not a big jokester or anything like that, so you won't get a whole bunch of jokes out of me, but for you to care enough about your, your status as a professional and your business to be up here when you could have been hitting the snooze button on the alarm clock like a lot of us were doing, it really means a lot to me to know that you're taking your business seriously. And I know then that the information I'm going to share with you today is not going to be wasted. So I'm not about wasting my time. I promise not to waste yours. I call this presentation the art of the connection because it truly is an art for you to make quality connections as you travel around in your business. The important thing to understand about connections though is that it's more than making just a sale. And we're going to talk a little bit about why that's such an important concept. Think about how many times you've walked into a business event and you could just feel that everyone in the room looked at you like you were their next prey. You know, that's, that's a feeling that we often get when we go to networking events, you know. And, and of course, back when I was a practicing attorney, I mean, we used to use the phrase, you eat what you kill, and that just completely set the mindset in place for, you know, that prey mentality. You know, I want to encourage you first and foremost to start praying with people instead of praying on them. That's, the, that's probably the first thing I would tell you is the mentality that you have to have if you want to be effective at building your business through relationships. Now we use terms like business networking, relationship marketing, all those types of things. But the truth is that what you're really doing when you're effectively making connections is you're building relationships. It's not about marketing when you think about it. It's about building relationships. And so what the first thing I want to make sure you understand about the so-called thing we call networking is that it's a mindset. It's not something that you can be taught to do. I, I can give you a checklist of things you can do, and if you don't have the right mindset, doing those things won't make a difference for you. So the first thing that you have to do to be an effective connector is to understand that it's a matter of who you are, not just what you do. So the intentions that you have when you reach out to people are more important than how you choose to reach out to them. We're going to talk a little bit about that in just a minute because I am going to give you some practical ways for you to begin the process of building relationships. The problem is that those things will not work for you until you have your head right. So I'm going to encourage you to become an influencer rather than just someone who networks. You, we all know networkers out here. We all know what it's like to feel like we're being networked. Um, one of the things that we have to start doing is to have a different dialogue in our heads with respect to how we describe ourselves. So one thing I want to start to encourage you to think about doing right off the bat is when you go to an event like this and you're given the opportunity to describe who you are and what you do, start thinking in terms of instead of having an uh, elevator speech or a 30-second infomercial, those are okay terms to use, by the way, but I want you to start adopting the mentality that you're giving in an initial introduction to yourself. People are going to be, it changes the energy behind how you deliver that. And people are going to be more, more receptive to having an initial introduction to you than hearing your elevator speech. 
I mean, when was the last time you got on an elevator and you were really excited to hear somebody's speech? I mean, did, did that happen ever? You know, so we want to keep in mind that sometimes it's the language that we use and it's also, you know, the spirit that we have in our heart as we're connecting with people. Now, why do I say that it's not about marketing if we're all looking to build our businesses? One of the reasons that it's important to understand that is that you actually have a much easier chance of getting business when it's referred to you than when you go out and give sales pitches. Think about this for just a minute. When you are talking about your business, it's a sales pitch. When your referral source is talking about your business, it's a testimonial. What do you respond better to? Do you ever get to the point where you're like not, you have nothing else to do and you just have to call a sales rep and have them come in and pitch you? You know, th that's one of those things, again, that never has happened in the history of mankind. You know, unless you're, unless you're selling sales courses and you want to see who needs your service. But here's my point. You'll have a dialogue with friends all day long and they'll talk about someone that they've used, a good experience, they had a restaurant they went to that was especially good, and that piques your interest and causes you to want to go out and experience that as well. You don't get that in a sales pitch. So by investing in relationships, you actually are creating your sales force without them having to sell at all. Now, here's the reality of that. Most of us don't have the patience to allow that to happen. It's not an overnight process. And that's because relationship building requires there to be a relationship, and relationships don't start just because you have a business card in somebody's hand. So don't think that your job is over today because you gave me or somebody else your business card. That was an invitation to explore a relationship. And I'll explain a little bit more about some things you might want to do in following up with some of the people that you met here today. So again, we have a mindset challenge. We need to start by having a different mindset in place with respect to how we perceive the relationship that we're trying to build with others. Once we are heart-centered about who we're being with folks, we can then do a few simple things that make it easier for us to begin nurturing and building that relationship. So one of the first things I want to encourage you to do is to resist the temptation to be in sales mode. The minute you move into sales mode, you start getting people tuning out from you. I want you to think about reversing your polarity a little bit. When you walk into an event like this, you are looking around the room, basically, what's the word we use? Prospecting, right? Okay? Yeah, you pull out your gold digging tools and you start prospecting right on the spot. And everyone knows that you're doing it. Well, you know what? Not everyone is looking to be sold. So when you do that, you've immediately put a barrier up between you and the people you could be developing a relationship with. So I want you to reverse your polarity, move from prospector for your own purposes to a prospector for others. Do you think that you'd be more welcome in someone's circle of influence if you were actively looking for ways you could help them instead of whether or not they're a good fit to buy your product or service? So I want to encourage you the first and foremost, the next time you go to an event like this, think about putting your listening cap on and have the attitude, the mindset that you're there to see how you can help others without selling them something that you do. Let me give you an example. When I go to networking events, I play a little game I call concentration. You all probably remember this growing up. You take a deck of cards, you face them all face down, and your goal is to turn over the jack and find another jack. And then you turn over at two and you find another two. And the one that ends up with the most matches at the end of the game wins. You remember, does anyone remember that game or am I speaking? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So how many of you were playing that last night, right? Uh, <laughs> so here's how you do that in real life in a, in a networking environment. When you go into a room like this, you should be looking to match people up with other people they'd like to get to know. So if I'm sitting here talking to Donna, I'm listening to Donna actively. I'm present with Donna. I'm not just waiting for her to stop, her lips to stop moving so that I can then interject. I'm actually consciously listening to what it is she needs and wants. And then I'm hopefully aware of who else is in the room that I can connect Donna to. I saw that happening with a friend of mine in the room here. I'm not going to call that person out because um, Renee's a little sensitive about being called out, but <laughs> she, she did just that. She was actively listening to somebody else in the room and then brought them up to meet some other people. You know, now that, now the, what that does for you is it strengthens the bond between you and the person you introduced them to. So you've just made two people happy. What did that really cost you other than being able to put your own selfish needs on hold temporarily so that you could make other people happy? 
So understand that when you make matches in a networking event like this, you are building equity in the relationship with the people that you're connecting. It's really that simple. Now here's the problem for most of us. Most of us don't have enough patience to believe that that would happen, so we don't do that. We're working in scarcity mentality where we feel like we got to get the pitch, we got to make the sale, we got to make quota, and so we're not making a difference first. So I want you to resist the temptation to do that, and I want you to write this down. Make a, say, a, make a friend before you make a sale. Make a friend before you make a sale. And that's exactly what you're doing when you do what I just described to you. You're making two friends when you're playing co concentration. Make a friend before you make a sale. Let people get to know you before they get to know your business. Many times it's a matter of how people perceive you, not whether they perceive your company as being valuable. I know a lot of people that work for companies I'd like to do business with, I just prefer not to go through them. And so you don't want to be that person that is the reason that you're not getting the business. So let people get to know you before they get to know your business. If you can do those two things, that's a mindset shift. If you can make that mindset shift the way I just described it, I promise you that your results will improve. So for those of you that are come concerned, well, wait a minute, what do I do about this month's quota? Well, you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. I can only tell you that if you start this process that I'm describing for you right now, you're gonna find that by slowing down, you'll actually speed up. Would you rather have one transaction today or 10 people in the room that are all looking to refer business to you because you were a good listener? That's the thing that you need to think about. The more people you have out telling your story, the less you have to tell it yourself. I have people all day long that are calling me to get connected to this person or that person, <clears throat> and then I have people that are calling me because somebody else was doing that for me. I'm your best salesperson you should take very good care of me. And the best way to take care of me is to find out what's important to me and stop worrying about what's important to you. There's a book uh, that I'm sure most of you are familiar with called How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Everyone's read that book. Have you read that book in the last year? Okay, don't, you don't have to call yourself out, just think about it. Have you read it in the last six months? Have you read it? You should be reading it daily is the point. Here's why. Every time you read that book, there's a new piece of wisdom that comes out of it. It is virtually impossible for you to get everything you need out of a book on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth read. If you're not reading that book at least once a year, you're missing the opportunity to implement the wisdom that's contained in it. But one of the things that Mr. Carnegie talks about in the book is that the, the best way to get someone to take an interest in you is to take a sincere interest in them first. And that's all we're talking about here. So this isn't something that I made, this is just something that I learned and do and it works. And the reason it doesn't work for you right now is because you're not doing it and that's the only reason. So become a connector, become a connector. Now how many of you own your own businesses? So I guess the rest of you work for somebody else that owns the business, right? Logically. Here's the good news. It doesn't matter whether you own your own business or you work for someone else, you should be approaching that business as if it is your own. You should be looking not just to be a sales rep for the business, you should be looking and treating yourself as a principal in the business. Because again, a lot of times we go into an event like this and we're in sales mode because we are the sales associate as opposed to the business owner. The business owner typically has a very different attitude about their business than the mere salesperson that you have perceived yourself to be. So that's another way to shift your mindset is to look at yourself from the perspective of the business itself. As a business owner, you're concerned about the reputation of your brand, you're concerned about how people perceive you in the community, and you should be. So as a employee of a business, start adopting a, an entrepreneurial mindset where you perceive yourself in the same shoes as the person that owns the business. That helps to shift your mentality, your mindset, in a way that allows it to be more productive when you go out there. Now, as a business owner, and if you are truly a business owner, this is especially important, when you go to networking events like this, when you go to events of any type, business events of any type, you should be looking to do two things. One is play concentration. We all got that one, right? And number two is to make sure you get a chance to get to know the person that's hosting that event. Think about this. How many of you know Kelly, uh, Kelly Leonard personally? 
Okay, the ones of you that those of you that don't know Kelly personally, you definitely need to get to know Kelly. Do you understand why? Kelly is an influencer. She was smart enough to figure out how to put all of you in this room. Kelly's the kind of person that if you know her well and you've got a strong relationship with her, she has access to a network of people that could be your customer or could become a referral source for you. And all you have to do is have a strong relationship with Kelly. I'm here today because I have a strong relationship with Kelly. She didn't have to invite me to speak today. The point is that we've got a bond that allows us to be able to be of service to each other. In fact, I know why she invited me to speak, because usually when I speak, I'm telling people to go to her to get their LinkedIn profiles set up the way they should be. In fact, the last time I was at a speaking engagement where Kelly was there, I didn't know she was going to be there. I was asked to speak about LinkedIn. Well, Kelly is the LinkedIn expert. So first of all, I'm thinking, why didn't they ask Kelly? But then I found out she probably spoke like seven times in the last eight months. But the point I'm trying to make is that my whole talk was about how to get the most out of LinkedIn. And when people raise their hand and said, hey, can you help me with that? I'm like, no. But this young lady in the back can. And that's exactly how it works. If I had been promoting myself, it would have been a sales pitch. When I was promoting Kelly, it was a testimonial. So again, I live this stuff. And that's, how I, that's why I know that it works. This is not something that might work. This is tried, true, proven stuff. And it's just a matter of whether you'll do it with the right spirit in mind. Now, with that in mind, the other thing I want you to learn about being at an event like this, if you're a business owner, and even if you're not a business owner, is that you should be looking to host your own events. You should be looking to host your own events. When you come to an event like this, you're one of 30, 40, 50, 60 people in the room. When you host your own event, you are the one who's responsible for the 30, 40, 50, 60 people being in the room. You have a much greater opportunity to become a center of influence when you're hosting your own events. Now think about this. What if your network consisted of people like Kelly Leonard who can put 30, 40, 50, 60 people in the room and you've got 10, 20, 30 people like that in your network? Your biggest challenge is not going to be finding business. It's going to be keeping up with all the business that you get. So you want to get connected to influencers. If someone is hosting an event, pick up the phone and call and introduce yourself. Let them know that you're coming out to their event. Ask them questions about the event. If I'm hosting an event, the thing that excites me most is when somebody else is as excited as I am. You know, so when I call, and you know, I didn't have to call Kelly, obviously, because I knew what this event was. But if I was going to this event for the first time and didn't know anything about it, I'd be calling and say, you know, Kelly, my name is Glenn Garns, and I'm with Village Connector Community, and I wanted to find out a little bit more about your event. It looks interesting to me. I'm wondering what kinds of professionals typically attend your event. Would you be in a position to introduce me to real estate agents because those are good connections for me? Now, when you do that, You've just stood out from everyone else that's going to be at that event that Kelly doesn't already know. You now have an invitation from her to come up to her and introduce yourself when you get there, and she's going to take you around and introduce you to exactly who you want in the room. When you're sitting here right now and you want to know who the real estate agents are, how do you know who that is? You know, you don't. How many real estate agents do we have in the room right now? One, okay? Now, <laughs> You could go around to all the real estate or all the people in the room and try to figure out which one the real estate agent is, or you could just ask Kelly, hey, Kelly, can you introduce me to the real estate agents? Oh, yeah, let me take you over and introduce you. Is it Dave? Yes. Okay. So my point in saying that is that you can shorten the time it takes for you to make quality connections by just feeding other people's craving to be appreciated. William James, one of my favorite philosophers, he's actually a 19th century psychologist, he once said that the deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. The deepest principle in human nature is the craving to be appreciated. Anyone ever had a craving before? <laughs> Rum raisin Hagen dazs chocolate, whatever it might be, you know? That's a strong emotional result. So when you can be the source of someone's craving, if you can feed someone's craving, you know that you've made a new best friend or what they call today, what a BFF, best friend forever, right? You know, best, uh, B, B -R -F, best referral, or BRS, best referral source forever, whatever. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to can that somehow. Here's my point. If you understand that other people have a craving to be appreciated and you take it seriously, be the source of feeding that craving, 
You've just made your job a lot easier when it comes to being a significant factor in their lives. And that's why this isn't about marketing, it's about relationship building. Take off the marketing hat and start perceiving yourself as a relationship builder. That's what an influencer is. An influencer is somebody who builds bonds with people that result in trust and therefore influence. You have credibility, trust, and influence with the people that you establish relationships with. That has never happened just because somebody handed you a business card and told you who's a good referral for them. So again, this is a mindset issue. The art of connecting is about changing your mindset to start praying with people instead of praying on them. I should have started off with that, right? But I wanted to end, I wanted to end on that note, uh, at least in, in, in terms of where we are there, because that's really the essence of this message. Stop selling and start being of service to other people. That's really the key. Now, I know there's a lot of people that don't have the patience to do that, and that's why it won't work for you. So if you don't have the patience to do that, then just go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. You'll get the results that you've gotten. And if you're happy with this, those results, that's great. But if you're not happy with the results, I just gave you the formula for changing all that. Now, I want to give you all a couple ways that you can get connected to me so that I can continue the conversation with you, continue to offer you value. I actually operate a radio show called Get Ready to Profit with Glenn Garns. And if you go to the website at GetReadyToProfit.com, www.GetReadyToProfit.com, you can get on the mailing list there in our Partners in Profit Club. Now, whether you listen to the radio show or not is irrelevant. By getting on that mailing list, you're going to receive a free ebook I've written called The Village Connector Guide to Business Networking. And I called it Business Networking because that's where your head is when you first get introduced to me, but the truth is the book is a covert effort to teach you that business networking really equals relationship building. So don't be disappointed that you've been snookered into believing that you're a business networker and, I'm, and at the other end I turned you into a relationship builder. You'll be happy with the result, trust me. Uh, you're you're going to be manipulated more ways than you know between now and the end of the day. You'll appreciate the way I just manipulated you in that one. So. But get on the mailing list for two reasons. Number one, I'd like to be able to stay in touch with you, share additional value with you. But more important, I want to get you that ebook so that you can start benefiting from some of the things that I know work when it comes to building relationships. Now we have about 10 minutes for questions. If you have a question, I'd like for you to come up to the microphone here and just give us your name and your question. That way we can maximize the number of questions that we can get answered. Does anyone have any questions? It couldn't possibly have been that simple. Oh, Sylvia has a question. Come on up here and do that. Sylvia Henderson is one of my favorite people on the planet. She has been, she has been part of my circle of influence, my inner circle, in fact, for over eight years now. So for her to still be here is incredible. <laughs> Name and name and name and your question. Sylvia Henderson, ideasuccessnetwork.com is how you reach me. And I'm not gonna snooker you, so <laughs> this is a So we hear about building relationships, relationships before business. When do you know that it's time to move from relationship to actually trying to get business from a person? What's Fantastic. what's that signal? Fantastic. So the answer to that question is very simple, and, I, and I'm glad you asked that because I forgot to mention that when you leave here today, your goal should be to follow up with the people who you perceive as being the best connection for you, not necessarily the best source of referrals. That means someone you know you can help without selling them something, or someone you know could be a good source of referrals for you if you can nurture a relationship with them. Not everyone that gave you a business card is going to fit that category. So don't just send out an email blast to everyone you got a business card from. The fact that I gave you my card doesn't mean I want to be on your mailing list. Okay? Just keep that in mind. Because a lot of you will run home and do that, and then you'll wonder why nobody wants you back at the next event. With that in mind, the best way to know when you're in a position to introduce what you do and to be of service to people is when they start asking questions like, so tell me what you do. And if you answer that question in a way that isn't salesy, they'll typically ask more questions. How would that work for me? What is involved with that? How can you help me? That's usually a follow-up question. So in other words, if you go 
right now and got a business card from everyone and you decide to follow up with people, your week next week should be spent going to having coffee or tea with people that you met here today that you see an opportunity to develop a relationship with. And during the course of that extended discussion, I promise you, you will naturally get an opportunity to tell a little bit more about what you do instead of trying to force it down your th their throats before they even know if they want your business card. You see, that's the problem is a lot of these networking events, it's a very unnatural circumstance. We all come expecting to hand out business cards, but the problem is nobody's listening because everybody's talking. So when you go and you follow up with people in a sincere way, that's where the relationship really starts to begin the process of growth. So you'll find that if you slow down and allow that process to happen naturally, it will be a lot more natural and people will be more sincere about asking you as opposed to just being polite because you're at a networking event. My name is Sean Mason Spence. I can be reached at SeanMasonSpence.com. My question is, and in this very digital world, you talk about coffee and tea. It just seems like more people, what is the rule of engagement when you're talking about being inundated, social media, and this very impersonal means of connecting with people? All right, that's a fantastic question. And I didn't prompt her to ask that one, but <laughs> I love technology. I live, sleep, eat, and breathe it. But I also understand how to put it in its place. Do you notice that I said when you follow up with people not to make it a Skype call or a Google Hangout that you get together and have coffee or tea? Now you could do coffee and tea over Skype and if that's the only way it can happen, that's better than nothing. But nothing substitutes for that direct one-to-one -one contact. That's another way that you slow down in order to speed up. If a relationship is important to you, you've got to be willing to make the investment. You see, when you invest in people, that's the same as if you invested in a newspaper ad or a radio spot or a marketing consultant or a press release. You're expecting a return on that investment. The problem for most of us is we don't perceive the investment in people the same way as we do in other things that we invest in. See, if you invest in a press release, the lifespan of that press release might be a week or two. When you invest in person, the lifespan of that relationship might be forever. I still have people that refer me legal work. My law firm was closed 14 years ago. But the reason they still refer me business is because they know that I'll refer that person to someone I trust to do a good job for them. So the point I'm trying to make for you is that you have to decide whether the investment in people is worth it. I'm here to tell you that it is. Now, does anyone want to know what they should have on their business cards? <laughs> Most of, you prob most of you probably don't have this issue, but let's just take a look and find out. Okay, that's good, that's good. All right, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give, for the benefit of the people who are watching the live stream that, that may be in, their, in business for themselves, the first thing that you wanna make sure that you, I'm gonna talk about what you shouldn't do and, what you sh and then what you should. Please do not allow yourself to be snookered into promoting Google, Gmail, Yahoo, uh, Verizon.net, Comcast in your business. Get yourself your own domain and it should typically be your name. My, my email address is Glenn with two N's at GlennGarns.com. Not Glenn at Verizon, not Glenn at Yahoo. And the reason for that is that people have a tendency not to take you as seriously when they see you operating from a free email account. How credible can your business be when you don't even have your own domain? So start thinking about that as, as an issue. Now I know we're running out of time here and, and again this is, a, this is a course that I've actually taught for five or six hours so you obviously realize I can't tell you everything you need to know all in one sitting. But I think I've gotten you off to a great start with what we shared here today. I certainly hope that you'll take to heart some of the things that we have shared. There's one other book I want to recommend as we wrap up. Bob Berg, The Go-Giver. Bob Berg, it's actually Bob Berg, John David Mann, The Go-Giver. Get yourself a copy of that book. That'll be a great supplement to how to win friends and influence people. I want to thank Mid-Atlantic Cre uh, Federal Credit Union for sponsoring today. I want to thank MCM for hosting, and I want to thank Kelly Leonard for the invitation. I hope that you all will stay connected, and thank you very much for spending time with me today.